It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another episode here from the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It is our mission to try to bring you some news you can use. Today will be no exception to the rule. You can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at the Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Don't forget to visit the website with the 24-hour stream at obnradio.com. And in the event you have one of those smart devices, all you have to do is say, hey, play the latest episode of the Mike Prince Show. And just like that, you'll have everything that you need. And with all that being established, let us jump into this week's episode of The Zone. Well, it has been a roller coaster week on the Hill and at JSU. And the dust has finally settled. JSU has ponied up, and Mr. Robinson will be settled and staying at least for a little while longer at Jackson State. So, with all that being established, it was extremely up and down all week long and we are I guess to the point now to what is going to be the next move for Prairie View A&M University so we'll keep our eye open and an ear to the ground to see what will be the next move for Prairie View meanwhile it has been reported that Jackson has made sure that Mr. Robinson will get a pay increase an increase in athletic budget, and a couple other things. So congratulations to JSU for holding on to their guy, and we'll see where all of this comes out in the long run. Meanwhile, we have one heck of a show for you this weekend. We are going to be hearing from quite a few coaches from the SWAC Media Day. We'll hear from Fred McNair at Alcorn. We'll hear from Coach Woody from Bethune-Cookman. We'll also be hearing the new football coach from Mississippi Valley, that is Coach Wade, as well as a seasoned veteran going into his sixth season of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, none other than Coach Maynard of Alabama A&M. And we're going to have a very heated roundtable discussion between Ben, Jack, and myself in the response to Prairie View being selected as number five in the West for the 2023 season. So put on your seatbelts and let's go for a ride on this weekend's edition of The Zone. It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince, SWAC Media Day 2023. I have a guy who's one of my favorites to talk to each and every time, all the way from the MEAC now to my beloved Southwestern Athletic Conference. That's none other than Coach Connell Maynard. Coach, how you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing real good. Thank you for making yourself available. Uh, I've always appreciated and admired that you don't hold your tongue. You say what you feel and, and, and let it fly regardless of where it's going to land. And you know I'm talking about this transfer portal and all this kind of stuff. But before we get into all that, man, bring us up to speed of what you guys are going to be playing with from Bulldog Nation. Uh, well, you know, we got a lot of guys in. Uh, we got some guys from last year. And, uh, you know, everybody's still competing for jobs. So we're going to be the best guy, the guy that comes out there and, and performs and, and play with consistency, not flashes. The flashes of greatness will get you beat. We want guys that are going to be consistent, make plays every day, every week. And uh, we're going to put the best uh, 11 out there on offense, best 11 on defense, best 11 on special teams, and, and we're going to go from there. Yes, sir. Now, it's no uh, secret, Coach, that uh, you have a, a senior receiver who's now at Prairie View that you have a long history with him, him and his pop. Uh, what should Prairie View be expecting when they – uh, get the likes of, of Jenkins to try to hit that team. Oh man, he got a heart of a champion, man. He he uh, he's a hard worker. He's passionate about the game. He loves the game of football, and uh, he's gonna give his all, one hundred and ten percent, every single play. Okay, and when you're talking about that bulldog look for twenty twenty three, who are some of the guys that you're gonna be leaning on the most? Uh, like I say, all the guy, all the. Uh, all the positions are still open, so we're going to lean on the offensive line. Uh, 
because we got Donovan Eaglin. Uh, he's going to be running the ball. Uh, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be yet, and uh, uh, we don't know who all the receivers are going to be. We don't know who all the starters are going to be yet. So, uh, But whoever we put out there, that's who we're going to lean on. Those guys understand that. Uh, that defensive line, we're going to lean on that with Zarion Hayes. Uh, put some pressure on those quarterbacks to make the back end, the linebackers better, and make the secondary guys better. Uh, so it's it's just, you know, it ain't rocket science. It's, you know, the games are wide up front in the trenches, so we're going to lean on those guys uh, offensively and defensively. Well, what I've always appreciated about your approach, especially from your offensive attack, you don't have a set system that you're in love with. You're going to adjust that week's attack to where you find vulnerabilities throughout the defense. And how much of an advantage does that give you, Coach? Well, I think it gives us an advantage every week because we're going to play the strengths and the defense weaknesses. So whatever we see that we can attack on the defense, then that's what we we're able to do because we're a multiple offense where we can do it all. We can play two running backs or, or three running backs or or one running back or no running backs. And, or we can play two tight ends or three tight ends or one tight end or no tight end. So it all depends on – what the defense has given us, what we think, we, where we can attack them at the best that week, and that's what we're going to use. We don't have a – where we're going to run an option, that's what we're going to do, no matter what. No, we don't do that. We're going to play okay. the option. we got a multiple offense. Right, right. Now, Coach, let's address the elephant in the room. What do you think the ultimate solution should be for this NIL and portal area that we're now dealing with? Um, a cap. you got to have a cap. Uh you know, you can't give these guys free agency. Um, it, it just, they're going to be going here and there and leaving and whoever going to offer the most. It's just like the NFL. you got to have a salary cap, and you got to cap it. Seniors can make so much. Juniors can make so much. Sophomores can make so much. Freshmen can make so much. And then you got to do that at each level. you got to do that at FBS, uh, the group of five, uh, mid-majors, FCS. you got just got to cap it. Okay. Now, I've had a similar uh, theory on budgets as far as FCS, FBS. Do you feel that there should be a cap on budgets as well to keep, the, uh, I guess, the playing surface as even as possible? Well, it, it is a budget. Where it, it, well, not a budget, but like scholarships. Everybody had the same amount of scholarships, F, FCS, 63. Mm-hmm. You can have 63 if you choose to get 63. Uh, FBS is 85. So you got to right. cap there with the scholarships. Now, as far as uh, how much money you can spend in recruiting or how much money you can spend in other areas of your football program, I don't know if you can cap it because everybody is not traveling the same distance. So some people might need more money for travel than other schools because they don't have to travel as far. It depends on what conference they're in and who they're playing and where they got to go uh, recruiting-wise. So the same thing, if you're going to recruit nationally, uh, you know, it's just, you know, I don't think you could put a cap on that, but I think they have a cap on the on the scholarships, got everybody the same scholarships. Now, you, you just got to put a cap on the NIL deals and, and money that the players can make. Okay, okay. Now, Coach, uh, as always, we appreciate you and your availability, and I know you're pressed under the clock, but I want to give you an opportunity to have some closing thoughts and comments as we wrap this segment up, sir. Oh, well, I'm just excited uh, uh, for another season. This is my sixth season going into uh, at Alabama A&M and in the SWAC. And Commissioner uh, McCullum is doing a great job with the SWAC and and, uh, and just moving it forward, uh, doing big things. And uh, I can't wait to see the future. Uh, we got some great plans, and uh, I'm just I'm I'm happy to be a part of the SWAC right now. Yes, sir. You know what I'm really excited about, Coach, with the way this thing is playing out. The next primary TV deal. I can't wait for that one, man. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. Uh, Commissioner McCullum uh, gives us a good deal. Uh, we got a good product. We we always have good rates when we're on TV. So I know it'll be a good deal uh, coming up here in the future. All right. Well, Coach, look, good luck to you in the 2023 season. And, uh, man, we look forward to talking to you real soon, okay? All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. All right. All Coach right. Connell Maynard of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. We'll be back with more SWAC Media Day 2023. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network. 
It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince, SWAC Media Day 2023. We are fortunate to be able to track down the newest football coach for the Bethune Cookman Wildcats, and that is none other than Coach Woody. Coach, how you doing, sir? And welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm doing outstanding. All right. Well, look, we know that it seemed like many moons ago, but you came in. Uh, it's a good son returning home due to some unique circumstances. What was that like, being placed in this situation after everything that had taken place? Well, you know, I don't know what took place, but all I can do is go with what was given to me, and, and so far it's been good. Okay, and that's always uh, the right approach to take into it. So if you could, bring us up to speed for the Bethune, Cookman, Wildcats, some key players from that offense and defensive side that you're going to have to gear it up, ready to go this season. Well, you know, I know uh, Jimmy, uh, you know, Robinson, you know, he's a senior. You know, he's he's been around the program <laughs> for a long time, and uh, he's really stepped it up, you know, this spring and then obviously going into the summer with his leadership. And, and he's going um, to do well, you know, at the running backs position. And then on the defense side of the ball, Mar here, Robinson, you know, obviously he's uh, – all-conference uh, player, Donnell Dees, you know, all-conference uh, punt returner. I mean, we, we're expecting big things from those guys. And then, obviously, along with some of the other players that's uh, progressing, you know, only having 15 days of spring practice and then going into the summer not it, not being able to practice, obviously, because of the, the rules that's set out by the NCAA, fall is going to be huge, you know, just to see the strides that these uh, student-athletes made. Yes, sir. Now, Coach, you know that Bethune is in a unique situation because, A, it's a private institution. So you guys can kind of hold to the vest of uh, some of the backdoor things that are going on. Without digging too deep into your treasure chest, what can you bring the listeners up to speed on on uh, the adjustments made budget-wise as you guys continue into what your second, third season of the Southwestern Athletic Conference? You, your budget as far as, you know, getting the resources, uh, having the yes, resources sir. that we need. Well, you know, uh, I'm going to be honest with your administration, uh, you know, obviously starting with our president, uh, uh, acting president, our board, and on down to administration, they've given me the necessities of what we need to run a first-class program, you know. So as far as things uh, in addition to that, I mean, we're we're putting our head down. We're not making no excuses. We're getting to work. Yes, sir. Getting right to work. Uh, love that attitude. And, and when the dust settles, coach, all of it is settled on the playing field anyway, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, when I was, uh, you know, at BCU, I mean, we 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 had really good times in the classroom and on the field, and we did with little. Yes, sir. Well, you, you know, in, in a different era uh, that you're dealing with now, a lot of players feel privileged not realizing that they're standing on some shoulders of some strong uh, former athletes who were just happy to have the opportunity to play. And uh, you kind of have to not force feed that type of mentality, but introduce them, in some cases reintroduce them to that uh, be fortunate for where you are. Yeah, yes, and, and you're right, and and uh, and that's why, you know, you have to have a plan. Uh, you know, these guys, number one, they have to know their job, and and obviously, you know, with them knowing, you know, they have to understand it, and then, you know, number two is, um, uh, you know, recruit the best players in the state of Florida and around the country, and then three, you got to have an unbelievable work ethic, you know outwork everyone that's in front of you don't leave anything unturned and then four be patient you know just seeing it through and and if you go out and recruit the right guys I, th I think the narrative would change a lot of times we go out and recruit the wrong guys and they expect so much you know you got nil deals uh going on now i mean we want tough football players at bcu and that's what we're going to do recruit when you recruit your problems Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, being able to come back and and be on the campus where you once were a student roaming around, and I ain't going to say you were mis mischievous or anything like that, Coach. I wouldn't dare put that on you. But w what is it like when you look at then and now, and 
How proud is the moment? I know at your press conference you're saying what an honor it was to come back home, but what has it been like for you in real life motion? Well, I, you know, the standard is the standard. Um, you know, just to be able to uh, communicate, you know, with some of the people that I went to uh, school with that's now working at, you know, BCU, it's, it's a family atmosphere, man, and that's what it's all about. And, and I just go day to day, you know, understand that, hey, you know, when I was here, it was a family, and you feel that feeling now, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting more uh, tidbits from you throughout the course of the season. And uh, it's starting real soon for you guys. When does uh, camp open up for you? The 2nd, August 2nd. August 2nd. Okay, Coach, look, we appreciate you uh, making time for us today here at the Open Mic. I uh, want to give you some closing thoughts and comments, sir. And the floor is now yours. Well, I tell you what, um, watch out for the Wildcats, and, and hopefully uh, I will get an opportunity to see you soon in person. Yes, sir. It sounds like a plan, man. And, look, good luck on the 2023 season. And um, I don't have to tell you, but you know the importance of every game, but in particular that final game, we know it's no holes barred back. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach Woody. Uh, you had to catch on to that one for a second, huh? Coach yeah. Woody, uh, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats from SWAC Media Day, Birmingham, Alabama. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince, and we'll be back with more SWAC Media Day 2023 from Birmingham, Alabama. Are you looking to expand your business or services? Let the Open Mic Broadcast Network help lead the way. With our customized campaigns, we are definitely able to reach your target audience. For more information, dial 832-213-8824. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, serving the community through faith and athletics. The voice of student athletics. Okay, well, Coach Fred McNair from the Alcorn State Braves joining us here on the Open Mic Network Hotline. Coach, thank you and welcome to the show. Um, a lot of uh, things expected from Alcorn this season. Uh, you are the quarterback whisperer, right, as, as I like to call you, man. How is that position looking for you this season, sir? We're looking good. I think we did a good job during our season as coaches going out and trying to find the right fit for us at that position. Uh, brought in a guy from the University of Missouri. I think that can play. And, uh, good to get him in in January. He go through spring with us. So um, we got a lot of players in that position that can play. It's just that the idea of them just getting in a transition and, and making plays for us. That's the biggest thing. Somebody got to make plays. And, and we're going to take that range going to be that guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Coach, I've always admired your body of work. Uh, being in Norman, Mississippi, uh, that's your your hometown, home area, and everything. And it we've discussed before where it takes a special understanding of the layout that you have before you, and you just have that Midas touch to make things work. Um, you're looking for some pretty strong things coming out of the Braves this season. I'm understanding, correct? Yeah, that is correct. And we, and we as coaches, we put together the best thing we can in terms of recruiting. Uh, to get the best guys on the field and uh, making great young men out of them at the end of the day uh, when they leave with degrees and, and championship trophy. That's the thing that we, we expect out of those guys when they come to play for us, you know, just to give us their all. And um, and as coach, we're going to put it to them and uh, put a lot of investment in them. So uh, those type of things matter to those young men that we met to So we're going to do the best we can as coaches to put a good product on the field and get a, stand, get a fan something to cheer about. Yes, sir. Now, Coach, if you could, uh, could you give us a, a couple of highlights of some of your student athletes on the offense, defensive side of things uh, for that look for the Braves in 2023? Well, you know, I got uh, Malachi Bailey. He with the defensive end that they had nine and a half sacks last year and they did a great job for us at the defensive end spot. That's one of the guys, bright spots on the defense that we look looking forward to him making more plays for us and uh, – and increasing his sacks. Um, uh, then you got Javion Howard, running back, Agent Zero, they call him. And um, he's going to do an outstanding job in the backfield for us on offense. So uh, we're looking for great things out of those two young men that we have with us today. Okay. And as far as anyone that you might have that, that's going to be on that radar, they don't know about them yet, but you won't be surprised if certain players 
get their accolades toward the end of the season. Who do you have like that under your radar right now, Coach? Well, you got Mel, um, Montario Hunt, receiver for us. Uh, going to play out wide, and uh, he's a good receiver you know, to us. Been a good transition. Um, that came in from Rutgers. Um, then you got Terrence, Terrence, uh, Terrence Ellis, a linebacker, um, came in from Rice University, and uh, going to do a great job for us. He was on the radar last year because of uh, Claudine Cherry uh the guy that got picked up for the Jets. So uh, Terrence Ellis did a great job for us at linebacker position. Okay. Now, Coach, I know this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be your third season in the West. Is it the third? Or this will be start the third, right? This will be the start of the second, I believe, in the West. Second, you know, I get look, I get bombarded and confused, Coach. And um, I know you're still in position to be able to do something that has not been accomplished. Uh, that's win a, a Eastern title and a Western title from the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Has there been a, a anticipated adjustment coming to the West, or is it still just plain old football? It's still football. At the end of the day, it's still football, whether you're in the East or the West. So uh, just just you don't get a chance to play some of the teams in the East that you used to play. Um, but other than that, it's just plain old football, man. We, we strap it on every side to be the best we can be and, um, and put a best product on the field and, and try to do something that hasn't been done before. Win, win the both uh, Western and the East Division Championship. So it would be good for us. Okay. And if you could, Coach, if you could round us out with your coaching staff and um, – I know there's been some adjustments and things moving. Uh, fill us in on who you got going to be supporting your program this season. Well, we, we did bring some new guys in. Uh, we got another, we got uh, Dwayne Taylor from um, – he's all tonight himself. We got him coming out of um, Norfolk State, so uh, he's a new addition to us. Um, we got Darren Covington, our defensive line coach, he's new. And um, we also have uh, Derek Welch, the safety coach, that's going to do a great job for us. Both the addition guys, and uh, of course, Coach, Coach Thomas, he was with me before 16 and 17. So the other guys on the offensive side of the ball, they've been with him forever. So um, just those guys transition to the defensive side of the ball. I'm excited about what they're bringing to the table. Yes, sir. Look, I know you're happy to have Coach Thomas back with you, man. It, look, he created a little havoc at Pine Bluff, but it was good to have him return home, huh? Man, it's always good to have a familiar face back. Uh, calling defense for you at home, man, and uh, he's going to do a great job for us this year. Okay, well, Coach, look, if I want to give you some closing thoughts and comments at this time. We do thank you for making yourself available for the floor. It's now yours, sir. That's no problem. We appreciate you. All right. Coach Fred McNair of the all One State Braves. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince from Slack Media Day. We're fortunate to have with us right now the new football coach for the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils, none other than Coach Kendrick Wade. How you doing, sir? Welcome to the show. Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, it's good to be on the show. Yes, sir. Well, it's good to have you. I know you've been a busy, busy man. You came in hitting the ground running. Bring us up to speed, man, of what's going on in the Delta. Oh, man, just, uh, you know, we've flipped the roster. Um, we've signed 61 new players since we've uh, been on campus at Valley, um, 25 high school kids, 19 transfers, and um, I think 21 junior college players. So uh, we've been uh, just focused on flipping the roster, getting the right type of kids in there to get ready to go out and compete in the fall. Yes, sir. Look, 61 new faces, man. You've been doing some, some talking. You ought to need some water right now, huh? I'm drinking it as we speak, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now, with everything that you've inherited and you're coming in and it's basically starting from ground zero, what are you looking to try and accomplish in year one for Mississippi Valley? Well, the most important thing for us is just changing the mindset of our young men, you know, just doing all the small things the right way how we conduct ourselves around campus, in the cafeteria, just in every aspect of our life. So uh, we, we just focus on doing all these little small, minute details that, you know, so often go overlooked. You know, but those things kind of transition to football. So each and every day we just focus on doing all these little small things, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I know that you lost some key players, and obviously with 61 new faces. Uh, who would be some of your guys that uh, be – uh, 
folks was folks to be looking out for uh, in this 23 season on the offense and defensive side? Offensively, um, we brought a kid in from Colin running back, Bobby Shanklin, who's going to be a really good football player for us, running back, uh, wide receiver, Kobe Chambers from East Mississippi. Um, if you guys keep up with the swag, you know his brother Booker T. Chambers was a all swag yes, runner sir. for for four years. Um, so we brought him in. Dino Maldonado, quarterback from New Mexico State, is a kid that we signed, and uh, he's in a in a in a heated battle for that quarterback position. So offensively, those are some guys um, that I think is going to make a little noise in the swag this year. Defensively, I mean, I don't want to start naming this so many transfer that we brought in. A.J. Barham from Memphis, uh, Aaron Webb from UT Barton, and it, that list go on and on. Um, Jordan Bussey, kid we brought in from UIW. We brought in about 12 defensive players that we expect to come in and compete for starting positions. Okay. Now, going back to Brooklyn Chamber for a moment, from what we were able to keep up with, he got into a little coaching uh, if I'm not mistaken, is he on your staff at this time, Coach? No, I was going to bring him on. He's right down the street at Mississippi Delta. He's a receiver's coach there. And, um, you know, I, I thought about bringing him on. They gave him a pay raise to keep him around. So um, he's still there, you know, but don't be surprised you see him with uh, Mississippi Valley in the near future. Yeah, you talking about that guy brought some electricity to the conference. Look, I'm kind of an old, old, long tooth around this conference coach. So when you said that, that brought a smile on my face. Um, with, with that being said, you, you got this new look, and of course, with the new look, come a new staff. Can you bring us up to speed on the staff that you have and how they came to be? Well, just I mean, you know how the game go. Uh, just relationships. And, uh, just you know, these are people that I know, uh, or people came highly recommended from somebody that I trust. You know, when you formulating a staff, it's not just about getting good coaches. It's about getting good, good people. So um, very diverse staff uh, come from a lot of different places, HBCUs, PWIs. So um, pretty young. It's a pretty young staff, but it's a staff with a lot of experience. Okay. Now, are you going to try to use the traditional spread scheme on offense and a 4 2 5 on defense? Yes. Um, you know, defensively, we're going to be pretty multiple just based on personnel. We can go from three down to four down without changing personnel. So uh, it, it'll be based out of four, two, five, but we can we can go three, three stack, you know, just with the personnel that we'll have out there offensively. We'll be pretty traditional, 10, 11 personnel for the most part. Okay, 10, 11 personnel. Now, Coach, um, I know you've named a lot of players. Who would you think is going to be – that key leader on your offense and defensive side of the ball, and what's got them ahead of everyone else right now? There's nobody right now, and they we we still trying to figure that out, and that's the part that we want to figure out, and a lot of that is going to get figured out in fall camp. So um, I don't think I can truly put somebody at top right now because we hadn't been through enough to see who's able to deal with things and who's able to lead, you know, when things aren't going the way that they're supposed to. So I think Paul Kemp is going to tell us a lot about who's the leader of our team. Okay, okay. And camp opened up for you guys on August the 3rd, I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, August 1st. Um, we have over 100 players, 104 players on campus right now. We've had them this summer, so they've been on campus working out. We're going to, Today will be their last day. We're going to give them about four or five days to go home, kind of, you know, recoup before we start on August 1st. Okay. Now, Coach, I'm, I'm very impressed that you were able to turn around 61 players in such a short time, and we know that time is of the essence, right? And you get a first time to make a first impression. What has been your selling point to draw such an interest to Valley in such a short time? Well, family, you know, I mean, we're all we have at Valley. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on. So, I mean, we're a true family. And, you know, that word is tossed around quite often. But once those kids step on campus, once those parents step on campus, they feel it. So we don't have to do a lot of selling. We bring them on campus, we show them who we are, and it fits. So, you know, it's been pretty simple for us. We just be who we are, very genuine. Well, you, you know, in this modern era, you know, the, the – Players are bigger, faster, stronger, and you would think 
um, and I guess this is just due to youth and not knowing any better, most of these guys that have been recruited, they think they're the best thing since sliced bread, right? So <laughs> why not come and display your skill set on a program where you can be that dude? And that's got to be part of the draw, too, I would think. Oh, of course, of course. You know, of course it's a part of it. And, you know, I want to highlight that even more. I mean, we're at a university that's never, ever in the history of it won a SWAC championship. So you have an opportunity to be the first. You know, we had great players, Jerry Rice, Willie Todd, Partner Dickinson, just to name a few. But nobody has ever been able to bring that championship to the Valley. So, you know, that's another selling point for us. Okay, okay. And um, I'm really excited and looking forward to what the Delta Devils are going to bring to the table, sir. And um, if it's all right with you, we want to be able to keep this type of uh, open line communication throughout the course of the season, man, to get up the update and insights of what's going on at Valley. Oh, man, absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt about that. We'd love to. Okay. Well, look, Coach, I want to give you some closing thoughts and comments as we can really wrap this session up, sir. Oh, yeah, you know, man, not a whole lot. You know, I don't have a whole lot to say. You know, I'm going to let the players speak on my behalf this fall. Uh, Just know that at the Valley, you know, we've been working extremely hard. We're process-driven. You know, we're not focusing on on outcomes. We focus on just doing the small, intricate details, you know, just those things that's going to help build better, better not only football players, but better young men. So uh, we're excited. And, um, I think the product that we put out there this fall is going to be something that's going to make Valley Nation proud. Okay, Coach, we thank you so much for making yourself available here at the open mic. Do know we got an open door and an on light. A light that's on at all times here at the open mic, and you're welcome at any time. And uh, go out, man, and have a productive year. Okay, Coach? Yes, sir. The time is now. Yes, sir. The time is now. Coach Kendrick Wade of the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We'll be back with more from SWAC 2023 Media Day. Hello, this is Alonzo Hardy Jr., the president of the SWAC Alumni Association. The SWAC Alumni Association is an organization founded on December 10, 1999 at the Sheraton Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Its mission is to serve as a rallying ground for individuals who have made the Southwestern Athletic Conference the illustrious conference that it is today. Its membership is open to former student athletes who played in the conference in any sport, as well as to coaches, athletic administrators, staff members, game officials, and fans. Annually, the association holds a Legends Awards and Roast Banquet or Luncheon where it honors individuals with Lifetime Achievement Awards, a Chuck Prophet Wacken Master Award, and occasionally a Distinguished Service Award. Proceeds from that event help to finance degree completion scholarships for student athletes who have exhausted their playing eligibility at SWAC universities, but who may still need an extra semester or two to complete their college studies. For more information on the SWAC Alumni Association or to get information on becoming a member, you can send correspondence to SWAC Alumni Association, 875 Miller Creek Lane, Newport News, Virginia, 23602. The email address is SWAC Alumni Association at yahoo.com. And welcome back to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. My line is definitely hot right now as we are going to discuss the latest projections coming out of the Southwestern Athletic Conference 2023 Media Day. And I have with me Brother Ben and Brother Jack, how you guys doing today? Doing good. Well, well, uh, Benjamin is a bit agitated, as you guys can probably hear, and we just going to dive right into this thing. Ben, what's on your mind right now, man? I'm not understanding how the voters are picking the the placement. Uh, who's coming in first and who's coming in second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> well, before we dig a little deeper than that, starting with the East, give us the pro- uh, projected finishes, and then we'll come to the one that's concerning you the most from the West. What was projected on yesterday? They have Florida A&M receiving 116 points, first place points. 
Jackson State receiving 94, Alabama State receiving 80. Uh, coming in fourth is Alabama A&M receiving 73. Believe it or not, they have Mississippi Valley uh, coming in as number five with 35 points, and they have Bethune Cookman coming in in sixth, last place at 34. That completes the East. And for the West? Okay, as far as the West, it don't get no better. They got that old raggedy Gucci coming to the uh, to the meeting with a Gucci outfit on them. Uh, coming in first with well, 122 points. Have the corn coming in second with 94. Uh, my wife would really be happy on this one. They got Texas Southern coming in third at 73. The G uh, coming in at fourth at 69. My beloved Prairie View coming in fifth at 68. And they have Arkansas Pine Bluff coming in at uh, number six at 33. Okay. Now, you do understand who make these projections, right? No, I don't understand. Explain that to me, sir. Okay. Was it a, was it a computer? These, no, sir. It was not a computer okay. at computer. all. Okay. all right. No, sir. As pick and decided upon coaches and sports information directors throughout the conference. So these are picks amongst your peers. So this is no outside influences, no outside entities. Now, do you understand I didn't necessarily agree with it, but I understand how we have what we have. We'll discuss that a little bit further down the line. I know how you're feeling. Jack, what is your assessment when you hear what you just heard, sir? Um, like we've seen in years past, they've given, you know, Prairie View the benefit of the doubt and have ranked us fairly high. I think with us underperforming the past couple of years, I think now we're getting basically a true assessment of um, where we need to be. And hopefully this is motivation for our team to, to do better. Okay. Well, now Ben, I, <laughs> I'm laughing. I give them. In, I'll give um, Gucci them a pass because they did win the SWAC last year, the SWAC West. But how can I put Grambling above Prairie View? If I'm not mistaken, you can um, correct me if I'm wrong. Ben, Prairie View has beaten Grambling the last how many years? Oh, okay, uh, five or six years. And you're gonna put Grambling above Prairie View? Furthermore. Prairie has beaten Texas Southern the last 15 years, probably. And you're going to put Texas Southern above Prairie. I have a problem with that. Now, what, what well, do y'all have and, to say about that? Well, also, Prairie has lost to Mississippi Valley two years in a row, which is, is not a good look as well. So. East is totally different. That's in the totally different. That's the East. I'm talking about in the West. Right. Yeah, no, but those, those two losses... We lost one, to Alcorn last year in overtime and on, 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 um, at home. And truth be told, we lost the game. The wide receiver, who's no longer at the university, I believe, we all know it, it was a slant, hit his hands, and he just dropped the ball, and the game would have been over. But we lost to them. We got beat down by Southern. So I got the beat down. Our overtime, we beat a team, we beat a team, and you put those teams that we beat ahead of us. And y'all are trying to convince me that that makes sense. No one is trying to convince you that it makes sense. But okay. All right. you, you, if you'd yeah, allow me to say this, yes, sir. please set your emotions to the side and let logic kick in. I did. Just as Jack said, just as Jack said, yes, you've beaten Grammar and you've beaten Texas up. But if, if we're going to Flip the coin. Grambling and Texas Southern had not lost to Mississippi Valley. And Prairie View has lost to Mississippi Valley two consecutive years in situations where all they needed to do was win that game with a, on paper, more dominant team. But for whatever reason, they couldn't deliver the knockout blow. I don't like the fact that they have Prairie View picks fifth, but as I stated, this is preseason. Someone has to be picked fifth. Someone has to be picked sixth. Someone has to be picked first. Uh, so, all right. Well, they could have so, picked us as last, then, for a while. I could. Well, um, well, but to argue your point, so Bethune Cookman, who's been putting a foot in Mississippi the last couple of years since they joined the play, and they have Mississippi Valley ahead of them. 
and y'all trying to convince me of that one game. So you saying that one game that they beat Prairie the last two years made them so much of a powerhouse that they were ahead of a team that beat them the last two years? No, man. Mm-mm. I don't go with that. Okay. So it's obvious then that you're definitely not in agreement that Texas Southern is ahead of Prairie View. And in my opinion, Texas Southern probably has the best quarterback in the conference. No, I, I don't think that he's the best quarterback in the conference. And I definitely don't think that the school, their football team, is better than um, Prairie View. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we will be seeing pretty soon. I think, uh, what, we're about maybe a month, 45, 50 days away, so we'll be able to see. Coach Bubble, 38 is, days at the time of this okay. report. Well, thank you. Coach Bubble, if you can hear this, um, I would appreciate if you could put you some octane in, uh, in the gas tank. And so when the, the players get on the field, we don't need no one-point win. We don't need no six-point win. We don't need no safety win. We need you to put a convincing whoop something because apparently the robots uh, have us picked really, really low on the total problem. So hopefully you heard what I said. Okay. Can I ask this question then? Yes, sir. Why, why are you so frustrated behind this? Uh, as I've told uh, you two before, if you are objective but you love what you love, when you see that you're being mis- uh, uh, misused, abused, talked about as if you were just an old dirty rag, um, either you can just go for the okie doke or you can um, fight when you think there's some misjustice going on. So I choose to fight, not go with the okie doke. Okay. Jack, what yeah. do you have to add to this conversation, sir? Um, like I said, my sentiments are the same. Um, past couple of years, Prairie View's gotten the benefit of the doubt, and this year it's more of a fact, you know, a true, uh, based on the stats. So, I, hopefully, this is uh, locker room material for our guys to to step it up. No doubt, and if it's going to be changed, it's going to be changed on the field. Okay. So would you have felt better if Purdue was selected number one, Ben? I would have felt better if they were selected uh, number two or three, sir. Okay, and if I'm not mistaken, for maybe the past five years at least, have they not been in those rounds? I think they've been closer to the three or four, uh, to be correct, not the two or three. Okay. So, uh, you're okay if they're selected behind Alcorn and Southern. I'm hearing correctly, right? I would suggest somewhere behind Southern, uh, in between Southern and Alcorn, if you want to go based on previous year's information. Uh, but okay. one good thing that uh, one good thing I think you should know that we've already talked about is they are going to have their opportunity, and so. Um, if there is a hot seat, I would say Coach Bubba is on the hot seat. This is the year that he needs to prove, uh, put up or shut up. Prove what, that he's coaching material. Prove that okay. he's the head man on the sideline. Um, because he's going to have the opportunity, as you said earlier. They're going to play the football game. And um, we, uh, Preview fans, believe that they have the talent. So now if you have the talent, then we want to put the talent with the right coaching to see what the outcome will be. And I believe if you have good coaching and good talent, you ought to be successful. If you have okay, good, so yeah, uh, if, for, based on what you just said, based on what you just said, has Prairie View had those combinations in prior seasons? In your opinion, no. Okay. The left hand. And the right hand has not been on the same page. Based upon what you're saying now. Yes. So, uh, again, we've had Dooley. And even though that they were winning, I think uh, there was a conversation by one of my frere brothers who said, man, we just penalty, we're a penalty team. So, you know, the coaching might have been there, but the players' productivity was not there. Um, so I don't think really they've been coaching and players have been in unison on the same but they were given the benefit of the doubt of finishing higher than what they had been finished. 
Well, if you say uh, second or third is benefit, then uh, so be it. But uh, again, I, I'm hoping that this will be the year that the coaching and the player will be on the same um, level. Understand. Okay. Now let me a- let me ask you this: and instead of looking at it in such a negative mark against Prairie View, how about receiving it as a positive mark for the improvements that people are sensing coming from Grambling and Texas South? You mean have some improvements. I don't know if their improvements are at the point where they will be able to catch up with uh, Prairie View. Um, because also Prairie View has had some improvements also. So if I have improved and you improved, but you were behind me, then you uh, two improvements. I don't think that means that your improvement is greater than mine. If I'm already plus two and you just plus one, you still behind me. So, uh, but we'll find out on the football field. Okay. Now let me let me ask. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did our projections for the season. Would you happen to have those tallies on hand on according to what we've chosen? How do we have the east and the west finishing up? You can right in front of me, but uh, in my memory bank, uh, we have them uh, at Florida a and finishing first. Uh, two people had Prairie View finishing first. And let me go back and say this. We had Florida a and finishing first in the east, and we had um, two people had Prairie View finishing first in the west. And somebody, uh, you know, uh, out of the three of us, um, they had Alcorn finishing first in the west. Okay, and um, I'm, I'm grown. I, I picked Alcorn based on uh, the preseason deal. As we stating, this are preseason. Now, uh, according to the poll from the coaches from the SWAC Media Day, they have FAMU and Southern meetings. So basically, it was a fifth and a flop. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, I believe Jack had Purview going 11 and 0. You had Purview going ten and one, and I had them going at eight and three, possibly seven and four. And I told you the game that was concerning me the most was the game against Texas Southern. So, um, according to that, and I'm just going to ask this, and you got to pick what you pick. Do you realistically see Purview going eleven and zero or ten and one? He was more like a ten and one, and I was a nine and two, but. Um no, I thought Jack had 11 and 0. No, I think he uh, so, he picked the, uh, the he, SMU game. Well, we both picked the, yeah, that was the game that. Um, yeah, I thought he like, said SMU was going to lose the Purdue game. No, I, I think, uh, again, I'll get my record next Well, Jack, but, Jack yeah. is here. That's, and then what you I picked, I did, uh, No, I think SMU was going to beat Purdue. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think it's okay. 21 and 9 and 2. 21, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely had high expectations for Prairie View and um, was was drinking drinking the punch. Um, but I can see where you know where the the coaches and uh, media uh, votes are coming in. I, I can understand their point of view as well. But once again, once again, guys, these are not media votes. These are coaches and sports information directors from within the conference that make these votes. It has nothing to do with outside entities. All this is internal on what you feel from based on what you have coming back, based on what you know others have coming back, and the overall feel for the squads. And that's that's the point uh, that I'm trying to drive home. And uh, being stated, it might as well pick them last. It doesn't matter where they pick them because they still have to finish them. They still have to. Yeah, when I said when I said pick them last, I'm like, if you're gonna give me motivation, just put all the dirt on. Me. Yeah. So when I'm knocking the dirt off, I know exactly who I'm going after. So just put all the dirt on. Me. Well, uh, so bubble green, if you're listening, uh, your program is devalued, and so if you feel like you are the coach that you say you are, then every day going forward, you need to be preaching uh, no respect. If there is a motto. No respect, disrespect, devalued, buried, uh, last place. You need to put anything that's negative on the wall inside the football locker room because uh, there's there's no respect right now. And so uh, what do you do to a bully? You punch him in the eye or in the mouth. 
Uh, so, uh, Bubble, uh, hopefully you got some uh, some boxing gloves that you can purchase for the players. So when we come out, we can just start punching right off the bat. So now we're being bullied? I just told you, if you put me at the bottom, and I don't think we're a bottom-tier team, then, yeah, I think that, you know, we're being bullied. You know, there's a show that my daughter and my wife been watching. It's called uh, Survivor, I think it is. And so one of the things I noticed on this Survivor show is people don't tell the truth. They'll just say stuff to just to get under your skin. So I'm thinking that that might be some of the play, too. Uh, I can't see Gucci saying anything positive about Prairie View. I can't see uh, Ronald McNair saying anything about Fred. Fred uh, McNair? Yeah, him. Um, the guy from Texas Southern, I can't see him saying anything positive about Fred. So, it, you know, it could be like a little, you know, some in between the lines. But again, we'll, we'll take the, uh, we'll take this. And uh, every time I see a football player on campus, I, if I can, I like to say, man, just remember, just remember, they don't respect you. Uh, if I could come up with enough money to do an NIL deal, I'd say, hey, first person to see blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I can't do that. So, you know. Uh, but, hey, September the 2nd, is that what it is, the 2nd? Yes, sir. So uh, yes, I'll sir. be there. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be in a suite or I'm going to be out there in the stands, but I'm going to be there. And so, uh, go Panthers. I'm ready for the season to start. All the talking. I'm tired of the talking now. Boy, I mean, I hadn't seen you this animated man since they changed the, the secret recipe for Coca Cola. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, oh, uh, while we're talking, um, I noticed that not one player from Prairie View was on the first team um, offense or defense. Not one player. Okay. So uh, I'm noticing that we have players from uh, uh, we have other players. I just leave it there. But hey, all of this is just, like I said, man. So there's so there's. Uh, hold on, really, so then, really if that's the case, if that's the case, Bramlin, if I'm not mistaken, had 10 of their 11 games that are going to be nationally televised on the platform. So do you think they're showing Bramlin too much love now? Yeah, but you know what? I do think that they're going to show uh, Gramlin. They're going to show all of these robots that pick them what a loser looks like because they're going to be on national TV when they lose it. That's what it's going to show them robots. Okay. Okay. So well, put, put, keep I'm, 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 I'm interested. I'm interested that they are going to televise the State Fair Classic on ESPN. Uh, they're I'll also going to have the Labor Day. They have the Labor Day Classic uh, being televised on ESPN. Uh, I'll be there. Too. Very interesting to see uh, the moves that ESPN has made of late. They're trying to highlight most of the classic games that are played throughout the conference. Um, for a twofold purpose, it's, it's going to be well attended. Those games will be well attended, and it's a way of highlighting the brand. So, one hand washes the other. But um, Ben is sure. fired up. I'm not. I'm just saying he's fired up. You know that. Um, Jack, that was it Obama to say fired up and ready to go? I'm fired up and ready to go. You fired up and ready to go. And, and where uh, my season kick is at? Uh, sir, I'm not at the ticket office, so I couldn't answer. No, I'm, I'm just saying in case they listening. Ticket office, where are my season tickets? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm fired up and ready to okay. go. I got four of them. <laughs> where are my season tickets, like Fred Seppel said? Where are my dead records? Where are my season tickets at? Yeah. Hope y'all listen. <laughs> oh, my God. I, 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 I'm, I'm liking this because he, he's fired up, but uh, the, uh, I'm not going to even try to comment on that, Jack. You got anything to say, man, as we get ready to bring this to an end? No, nah, this is, uh, I like I like that he's fired up, you know, entertainment, you know, love the entertainment value. And, uh, um, I mean, 
I'm I'm a big Prairie View fan as well, but um, <laughs> like, excuse me, I'm sorry like that, that you say something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Hey, I was, I was a season ticket holder just like you for a couple of years. So, uh, but at the same time, like I said, it's using it as motivation to, to to do better and get better. Mhm. Uh, ben, I want to give you some closing thoughts sir, before we wrap this segment up. Uh, the people who are listening to know that there is only one person out of the three of us that is the true proud purple and gold alumni that will support to the end I'm the only one just want y'all to know go vote for Benjamin Edwards I don't have nothing to say and you think I'm going to let you end on that note <laughs> right <laughs> You, you you really right. think right. I'm gonna let you right. in on that that you're the only one and true right. P V fan? Right. What, what right. the fans already know based on the record that you picked them to go what seven and four? I like said that, so. seven and four worst case. So we eight already, and three, so they already best know case. That, that they already know that you got you know some uh, Rodney Dangerfield going on over there. No respect. So, okay. Uh, okay. So again. <laughs> I am the only one on this platform that mm. is the true supporter of the purple and gold. I just want the fans to know that. Uh, I said ten and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten, we not even talking about you, so we, I, I dropped the mic. That's it. Now. That's it. Ten uh, and he one. drops the mic. Okay. Yeah. Well, this and will I'm definitely five. be continued. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Jack. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. No, to no. I just, I just, no, we don't go mean, backwards. He's not ahead. No, he what just. He say? just. Yeah. He, I mean, he just act. He just acting like uh, I wasn't five feet, you know, down from him. Uh, he, just, he just totally, <laughs> just totally, just totally forgot that. Just totally I know. Forgot that. I know. But that's, we want to wrap this segment up for today. I appreciate you guys, and we'll definitely be hearing from Ben and Jack throughout the course of the season. And hopefully Ben keeps the fire burning there since he's the only true Panther fan on this segment here. And uh, mm-hmm. what will we do with our old Ben? Mm-hmm. We'll finish it out since you're the true fan. Well, that's yeah. enough. They know that. I just started. They know what to say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I, know what people, I know what the two mm-hmm. people didn't say. They didn't say nothing. So they, like okay. I said, they know. The people know. Uh, Jack, you know, you know what? Know. There's a term for Ben. And that's called paper champs. He's the paper champs, okay. and uh, he's he yeah. he's disappointed behind yeah, yeah. a preseason pick. And but mm-hmm. I like I like the fire and I like the enthusiasm. I've got the break, fellas, because we got more show to move on throughout the day. But this is Ben Jack and the radio guy, Doctor Mike Prince, and we'll be back with more. Well, as I told you guys, it definitely was an action-packed episode, and we thank you so much for joining in with us on this week's episode of The Zone. We want to thank all of our guests who helped make this show available. Of course, all of our coaches, Coach Woody, Coach McNair, Coach Maynard, and Coach Wade. We also want to thank Ben and Jack, and we want to thank you, the listener, for joining in with us at the zone i am the radio guy dr mike prince don't forget you can follow me on twitter at the mike prince show the youtube channel is the open mic broadcast network go there like and subscribe the videos and the content to help us continue to move a little bit further down the road and please remember to visit the website for our 24-hour stream at obnradio.com i am going to exit stage left Thank you guys for joining in. So until the next time, you be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.